Hi girls, it's Miss Gaska. Today I'm going to go over English 2, Semester 1, Week 2, Activity 1.4, Language and Writer's Craft Syntax. Our learning targets for this activity are to identify different types of phrases and use them in writing, and to revise writing to include phrases and parenthetical expressions. So understanding phrases. Consider sounds as the building blocks of language. Combined, they create words or diction. When writers move these words around, they are playing with syntax. One essential element of syntax is the phrase. Understanding what a phrase is, how to punctuate it, and when to use it in your writing will help you make informed decisions about your syntax. So phrases clarify meaning by adding information or by describing the subject, the action, or other nouns in the sentence. Standing alone, a phrase is not a complete sentence. Three types of phrases include gerund phrases, participial phrases, and infinitive phrases. Review their definitions in your grammar handbook, mark, uh, marking the text to highlight their function and proper method of punctuating them within a sentence. So you don't have a grammar handbook, so I'm going to go over them on the side here. Um, but first I want to point out that we have this definition for syntax, which you'll need for your final exam review. So syntax refers to the arrangement of words in the order of grammatical elements in a sentence, or the way in which words are put together to make meaningful elements, such as phrases, clauses, and sentences. So gerund phrases, participial phrases, and infinitive phrases. So a gerund phrase is a phrase that includes an ing word. So gerund phrase. So for instance, I like um, swimming in my pool. So in this sense, swimming would be a gerund um, to create a gerund phrase. You have participial phrases, which is, hold on, sorry. You have participial phrases, which sometimes use ed, sometimes use, hold on. Participial phrases can also use ing, just like gerunds, but there's a slight difference. They can also use en, or they could use t. So for instance, smiling, the girl took my hand. So in this case, smiling isn't a gerund because it's not a noun, it's a verb, or it kind of describes the girl, so it's more of an adjective. So it's not, um, it's only a, uh, a gerund if it's also a noun. So in this case, since it's an adjective describing the girl, it's a participial. You could also have um, blended into the background. Um, I went unnoticed at the party. So here we have blended um, as our word that describes I, and it works as a participial phrase because it's taking this verb and it's turning it into an adjective to describe um, the subject of the sentence. Um, same thing for hidden, uh, in the forest, I was sure no one would find me. So again, we have hidden describing the subject, which is I. And then, um, dreamt up by our forefathers, the Declaration of Independence is one of the most important um, national documents. So dreamt would be our participle. So here we're supposed to highlight the gerund, participial, or infinitive phrases. Uh, I haven't gone over infinitive yet. So infinitive phrases um, use to plus a verb. So he is going to call you. So to call would be my infinitive phrase. So let's look. We're going to highlight gerund participial and infinitive phrases. I'm going to do gerund in yellow, 
I'm gonna do participial in pink and I'm going to do infinitive in light blue. So I'm only gonna do the first one with you um, and you could do the rest without me. So able to sit in a paneled office. So here I already have an infinitive phrase, which is to sit. Oh, whoops. Able to sit. And then I also have paneled, which is a participial phrase and it describes office. So here we go. Drafting memos. So drafting is a gerund phrase because it's a it's a noun here. Or I guess drafting would be considered um, a participle here. So I'm going to leave it pink. Able to order. So here we have to plus a verb again. So that's another infinitive. In fluent Spanish at a Mexican restaurant. So, we don't really have any examples of gerunds there because a gerund has to be a noun. Um, so, keep on the lookout for all three of those things. Go through each of these and find the participial words and phrases. So, let's continue. So, the beauty of recognizing types of phrases in writing rests in your ability to incorporate these syntactic structures in your own writing. So, choose three of the previous sentences and use them as models to write original sentences using gerund, participial, or participle, and infinitive phrases. So, you're choosing three and using it as a model for the structure. Then, for prepositional and appositive phrases. So, phrases can come in more shapes and sizes than gerunds, participles, and infinitives. So prepositional phrases and appositives also add precision to writing. In fact, they provide critical information that helps us combine sentences rather than depend on multiple simple sentences. So here's an example. Sophomores take English. They study world cultures. So we have two sentences, but here it's combined using a prepositional phrase. Sophomores, sophomores study world cultures in English class. So using the preposition in, it tells us the information to combine the two sentences. Here's another example, using an appositive this time. The study of grammar remains a critical skill. It is a lost art. An appositive describes the noun in, and it's separated usually by two commas. So the study of grammar, a lost art, which describes grammar, remains a critical skill. So in this case, it's in a positive phrase. So now we're looking for prepositional and a positive phrases in the following sentences and using the mentor sentences as models, practice writing sentences with those types of phrases. So again, I'm going to use two different colors. I'm gonna use teal for my prepositional and I'm going to use yellow for my positive. So she seemed entranced by the music. So by the music is a prepositional phrase because by is a preposition. A frenzied little piano piece. So that actually is an appositive because it describes music in more detail. Whoops, this is supposed to be changed, my bad. Um, describes music. So this is gonna be yellow. And then it says with a mesmerizing. So here it's a prepositional or yeah, a prepositional phrase within the appositive phrase. So this is the prepositional part of the appositive, which alternated between quick, playful passages and teasing, lilting ones. So that's it. And then you're going to practice writing a sentence with those types of phrases. So I'm going to give an example for this first one and then the rest are up to you. So here I'm going to say, he 
seemed shocked by the news. A piece on the continuing crisis in another part of the world. And which affected people he knew and loved. So I have this first part copied here. I have my positive, I have my prepositions. So I'm going to show you how I divided that up. By the news is an example of a prepositional phrase because I'm using by, and then I have my positive here that describes what was on the news. Um, and I actually use two prepositional phrases within that. So I use on, oh, oops, on the continuing crisis, which is one prepositional phrase. And then I use a separate prepositional phrase here where I said in another part. And then I have a third prepositional phrase when I say of the world and which affected people he knew and loved. So I have by the news, on the continuing crisis, in another part of the world. So all of those are prepositions because they use prepositional phrases because they use prepositions. You may want to familiar, familiarize yourself with what prepositions are. So it's up to you to do the same thing I just did with that. And then for parenthetical expressions. So parenthetical expressions can be effectively used to add voice to writing as they use editorial comments to the text. When you incorporate parenthetical expressions in your writing, set them apart from the rest of the sentence by placing commas around them. Practice writing your own sentences by emulating the styles of the examples below. So here we have, the headmasters have been in India, I suppose, 15 years or so. So it's kind of like something that the author added to give it a little bit of extra voice. So practice writing your own and then move on to the second one. For check your understanding, it says revisit a piece of your writing from this unit and revise it to include various types of phrases, or revisit a reading passage from this unit to identify phrases that might be present. Highlight and label the phrases you find. So you could choose which of these two things you want to do. And I believe that is it for activity 1.4. Yep. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.